What's up, people of Commentators Collide? I'm that Deep Voice, and the gameplay guys got right in front of your face right now is nothing special. It's just a bunch of clips from multiple different games using the L115 bolt action sniper. I figured that I would put together a bunch of clips into one gameplay instead of just posting an entire game of me tactically sniping or Wings of Redemption sniping, as some people like to call it. I figured I would just use the parts of the most action it has the most kills, where I go on some decent streaks, the most entertaining parts, basically. And before I get into the actual commentary topic, I just want to say real quick that if you guys don't know, we are going to be doing daily uploads from now on, and everybody has their own day. My day is Wednesday, obviously. Woohoo, hump day! Now let's get on the actual commentary, which is why I think people aren't enjoying ghosts. Two of the reasons I think are showcased in this very clip you guys are watching now, this Stonehaven clip. You've got to play a more passive, defensive game than you normally would with a Call of Duty title. Most people have instant ADHD when they're playing Call of Duty and they can't sit still, they have to be constantly moving, they can't play passively, they just have to run around like a chicken with their hut cut off. Then you get people like me, who I was more of a passive style player to begin with. I mean, I was never like a sit in a corner douchebag or like just head glitch an entire wall the entire game. But I definitely wasn't, oh, rush into the spawn with an MSMC and Black Ops 2 and just go absolutely ape shit on the enemy team. And a lot of people did like the rush in Black Ops 2, but I didn't find success with that. I was never really a big SMG player to begin with, but then once I started playing Black Ops 2, I started playing a bit more of a competitive Call of Duty, game battles, league play, that type of stuff. And I started finding myself using the M8A1 exclusively, considering I was the anchor when we played Hardpoint, and I was the supporting AR when we played CTF, and I just AR'd when we played S&D as well. And just playing competitive, playing against better players, and playing against people who actually have brains and have thumbs, it, you have to play a lot more tactically. You can't, you have to make smarter decisions when it comes to gunfights, how to navigate the map, how to position yourself for a gunfight, how to position yourself to be ready for a gunfight. You have to think about pretty much everything you, you have to do. And that really slowed my game down, even when it came to pubs, and it really helped me become a better player at the game. And then you have the people who'd like to rush into the spawn and wonder why they're dying considering they're sitting in the enemy spawn. Now I don't actually have the gameplay in front of me as I'm doing this commentary, but if you guys are, while you're watching this, if the Stonehaven clip isn't playing at the moment, you guys probably remember that people were constantly spawning in, this, in one certain spawn point. They kept running right past me. And that's because I was sitting in that little destroyed roof building, whatever the hell you want to call it, and there's a building that's like right behind me off to my right. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a bigger building. It's like the very corner of the map. And in that building, there's a spawn point. I've had people spawn in that spawn point while I'm looking directly at it. There's like a little tiny wall that kind of like blocks the view, but you can still see the person spawn there. So I guess Infinity Ward's logic is, oh, there's a wall there. So if they're looking at that wall, you can still spawn there. Even though if you're looking at the wall, you can still see the people. So basically what was happening is they were spawning in that broken building that was behind me off to the right, and they would spawn, and they would run out, and they'd run right in front of me, and they'd just get sniped instantly. And then if they tried to take me out, I had an IMS under me, so they would just get taken out by the IMS. If you guys haven't seen already, which if you haven't, you probably live under a rock, but there's been people posting left and right clips on YouTube that already show off how flawed the spawn system is. People playing free-for-all where they spawn like four times in a row into a gunfight or something like that. People who spawn literally in front of a guy and the guy just knifes them as they spawn. Now out of those two reasons, I think the spawn system is one of the actual legit ones for something why you shouldn't like the game. Because that's something that they can fix, they might fix, they probably will fix it. But that's something that's actually flawed with the game. But when you look at you actually have to play a more passive game, that's not something wrong with the game, that's just something how the game flows, that's, that's something the community creates. That's not something they can fix. That's just something you have to get used to. But then you also have those dumb fucks that complain that it doesn't feel like Call of Duty anymore. Those are the people you gotta drop kick. Because those are the same people who complained the last four or five years of Call of Duty that every single Call of Duty game is the same thing. They're just copying and pasting. They're doing this, they're doing that the same. This is exactly the same. They're like, oh, this this gun's the same from this game. They're just, re they're just recycling guns, recycling maps. They got the same engine they're working on. And now that they got what they wanted, they got a new engine, they got a new game, it doesn't feel like Call of Duty. Now they got that, they still bitch about the game. But that pretty much does it for my rant today. 
If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to pretend the like button is that dumbass that, that, that complains about the game every year and dropkick it. Once again, I'm that deep voice and I'm Gonzo Alonzo.